I'm Jeff McCrae and I'm the Development Manager of IBM Rational Insight. Rational Insight is a business intelligence and reporting tool that is applied to the software and systems development domain. In this video I will be showing you a demonstration of the activity tracking incubator project that we have delivered on Jazz.net. Here we see the web user interface of Rational Insight. There are several folders here that contain reports that have been delivered with the Rational Insight product as well as an activity tracking folder which contains reports that are delivered with the incubator project on jazz.net. There are four main reports that are delivered with activity tracking and we will start by looking at activity by individual. Here we're provided with a filter so that we can narrow down the range of results by owner or by date, but I will leave the filters as is so that we can look at the full range of information that's available. One use of this report is by the project manager to determine the overall status of a project and the activity level that is occurring. So the magnitude of the bars that you can see on this represents the, the volume of source code changes that are occurring in the project. And so the project manager can use this to determine if the project activity level is decreasing in the stabilization phase of the project so that we are uh, approaching the completion date or if the activity level is remaining high, that's an indicator that the end completion date may be delayed. Another use for this particular report would be by an individual who is filling in a timesheet at the end of the week. So if a developer uh, does not recall which items they worked on, they can look at this report to see that list of work items. So each date represents one bar and the lines of code is on the y-axis, so we can then look at uh, a particular colored portion of a bar to determine the work item activity. So this is work item 69 and there was 52 lines of code changed on September 17th. The developer can then drill through to see more information on this particular change. So we can click on that work item and we'll get more metrics that are provided on the change itself. Here we see again the work item ID is 69 and the abstract is create a game for word scramble by Marcus Kent. The planned effort, the actual effort is 2 and 2.4 hours as well as a number of metrics on the source code itself. Uh, the metrics on the source code were pulled directly from RTC and then calculated as part of the activity tracking date incubator and stored in the Insight Data Warehouse which allows for quick reporting. One measure that is calculated here is in terms of complexity and so we have cyclomatic complexity which is represented by CC and response for class which is represented by RFC. And these are measures that can be used by the quality assurance team to determine the overall complexity level of the code and would give them a better indicator into how much testing may be required to cover all the code paths. We can further drill through into the change sets themselves by clicking on the number of files changed here and getting more information on that. Here we see the list of files that have changed along with several metrics for those changes. So we can see the cyclomatic complexity, for example, of main.java is 9. When we look at the change summary in the method start, for example, in main.java, the cyclomatic complexity is 7. So from this, the quality assurance team could ascertain that the complexity is not increasing so that the level of testing that they have in place might be adequate. So this gives them a better indicator into the nature of the changes that are occurring in the source code instead of just the, the raw yes or no about the uh, work item being included in the build. Let's look at the next report, which is Activity by Project. Again, we're provided with some filters, 
and we will bypass this so that we can see the full range of information. A program manager may be interested in this report. If there is a case where there are three projects being managed and they are all expected to have equal funding, the program manager may expect to see a similar amount of activity occurring across the three projects. In this case, we can see that the lines of code changed it varies drastically between the three projects, and Word Scramble takes the majority of the activity, whereas Calculator and JUnit project seem to be neglected. So if there is an expectation that they are supposed to be equal activity, the program manager can then use this data to dive into the situation further to determine what's going on and make appropriate decisions to get the projects back on track. The third report is activity versus effort. Again, we have further filters we can use to look at specific owners or work item types or even within a specific project, but we will look at the full range of data that's available in our data warehouse. And this provides a scatter plot, which is a good visual indicator of clusters of work item points in actual effort versus lines of code. This allows the viewer of the report to look for outliers. So we can see, for example, there is one work item out at the end here, which shows that there is 80 hours of actual effort spent, but there were zero lines of code change. So this may be something that the development manager may want to look in to determine why that happened. That's a lot of effort spent for very little change that occurred. At the other extreme, we have a case where we have a work item where there was eight hours of actual work spent and 200 lines of code changed. And the development manager may want to look into this as well, but for different reasons. Maybe this developer is an expert or very efficient in the code that they have delivered and can share best practices with other team members so that the overall organization can improve their productivity and success rates. Once again, these particular work items can be drilled into to see the specifics of the changes by just simply clicking on each point in the report. The final report is effort by work item. And this one allows the organization to get a better view into their estimation skills. So from this, we can see that the average planned effort is 5.08, whereas the average actual effort is 5.18. So overall, as an organization, we can see that the estimation skills are actually quite good. This means that the, the organization gets better visibility into the true nature of the, the project status because we know that the estimates have historically been accurate. Where this gets interesting, though, is when we dive into the estimation skills of a specific developer. So if we look at Rick Yuen, for example, we get the report of his estimated effort versus actual effort. So here we can see that his average planned effort is 5, whereas the average actual effort is 7.2. So Rick has a habit of consistently underestimating the actual effort required to resolve the work item. So maybe he's optimistic, or maybe he doesn't include the unit testing in his estimates. But either way, we can use this report to feed the information back to Rick so that he can then improve his estimation skills and thus the overall organization would improve and increase their probability of success in delivering the project as a whole. So that has been the activity tracking incubator demonstration. Uh, you can download it from jazz.net and you can actually read more information. There is full documentation there as well, so you could even download it and try it out for yourself.